Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is my friend Amy. You guys will remember her from us having our cosmetic surgery together almost a year ago. We are going to answer your questions all about our cosmetic surgery. We have questions for both of us. We have questions specifically for Amy. So I'll let Amy introduce herself, Let have her tell you where she's from and a little bit about her before we jump into all the Q&A. Hi, <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with one of my BFFs. Um, my name is Amy. I live in upstate New York. Think wine country, not city. I'm a long ways away from the city. I'm not a city girl. I'm country bumpkin. <laughs> she is. <laughs> um, I um, work in construction for a living. I totally love it. And I have currently lost approximately 100 pounds and maintained that weight loss and decided to have plastic surgery. And the best thing I did was have it with my BFF. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend having a friend for life changing. Yes, yes, definitely. We have a ton of questions. I posted it on YouTube in the community tab, in my Facebook group, and on my Instagram. So we're just going to read the question and then we'll each take a chance to answer. If it's specifically for Amy, I'll just allow her to answer. Um, Quickly, our surgeries that we had, if you are new or if you missed my plastic surgery vlog, I had a back lift, an extended breast lift, and implants. And I had a 360 tummy tuck with unexpected but wonderful fat transfer. Okay, so we had totally different procedures. So like I said, there are some questions specifically for Amy. So the first question is, what do you wish you had known before your surgery, like pain, recovery time, etc.? You can go first. Probably the first thing that I would, that pops in my mind is I wish I'd realized how difficult the recovery would be. I completely underestimated the recovery. And then the flip side of that is I wish that I had known ahead of time before arriving in Mexico and like seeing my surgeon that I was going to have a fat transfer because I literally went in blind. I had no idea what was going to happen, what to expect what was going to happen down the road. That was more um, of a challenge than anything. Not right away. It's what happened six, eight, nine, ten months later. Yep. And mine is similar recovery time for sure. Uh, the recovery was really hard for me. I feel like mine was even harder than Amy's and they thought Amy's was going to be harder. And also the other thing that I found was challenging based on being in Mexico is the communication. Yes. Um, not so much in the hospital because everybody spoke English really well, but in the recovery house, which if you missed the, my vlog, I actually vlogged mine and Amy's experience. I'll link it for you in the description box. You can see a little bit more what we're talking about, but the communication was a little hard in the recovery house because they didn't speak English and we had to use a translation app, which always didn't work out correct the best. So those were, I feel like the two, we kind of knew what we were getting into, but you never know all the ins and outs of what to expect in any, any surgery. Um, the next question is, can you talk about scar therapy, scar away sheets, cream, bio oil, etc. that has been helpful to you both to diminish your scars? And she says, I'm five months post-op from my plastic surgery, tummy tuck and BL, BL, what's that? I'm not sure what it'd be. Breast lift, maybe breast, breast lift and lipo and would like to know more from what you both have loved. So I started with a frankincense oil, which was a recommendation from a friend of mine that had cosmetic surgery and it was fine. It smelled really bad. That was the only thing that we didn't like about it. So now I'm using a bio oil and I just have Troy put it on my back scar because I can't reach it. And then I put it on my breast scars and I feel like our scars look really, really good when we're not even quite a year post-op yet. Yet. So Amy has more scarring than I do. So what Correct. did you... Um, so I initially grabbed some of those uh, synthetic sheets and I found them awful. It was uncomfortable. They would not stick or they would stick forever. And it was dis it caused me a lot of discomfort to take them off. Mm -hmm. However, I also now use a bio oil mm -hmm. every single day, except when I'm traveling, but that's a whole different conversation. And I, I think our scars way. healed really well. I mean, yeah. they're still a little bit red. <clears throat> there is some puckering, which is to be expected, but overall, I feel like that's the least of the yeah. problems. I was so excited so to get here and <laughs> jump in here and be like, Jen, look at my scar. It looks so good. Yeah. And I'll, I'll insert some pictures of our scars yeah. um, for you guys as well. So you can see what they currently look like. Um, the next question is how long after your BA, what's a BA? Per Breast augmentation. Okay. Could you work out again? Would you do it again? So Amy didn't have that. So um, I was allowed to walk after six weeks. And the minute six weeks was up, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I was out walking the minute that I could. Um, and then I went back to boot camp at that time as well. But I just had to modify a lot of 
the exercises because there was still a lot of tenderness and discomfort in the breast area. Since the implant is under the muscle, when you do an exercise, you feel it shift. Like men can make their pecs move. We can do that too because the implant is under the, the muscle. And I would absolutely do it again. Oh, I would do my surgery yeah. again. Yeah. Even though it sucks in the moment, you forget how much it sucks as time goes on. Then you're like, oh, I'll do it again. I wouldn't have any more surgery. Nope. But I would do nope. this surgery again, okay. if that makes sense. It's almost like if you've had a child, you know, it hurts like crazy. Oh my gosh, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. And then you see your child and you forget how much it hurts. Exactly. Until you're in that stage again and have another child. Yes. It's the same situation. It's the PTSD you totally wears off. You forget about yeah, it. Yeah, you forget how miserable it was. Um, I thank you both for the surgery info. Oh, I'm going to say money to go there. She's talking about going to Mexico. So this one says, question for Amy. Do you still have numbness from your tummy tuck? I'm four months post stop and still have some numbness. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's totally normal. Yeah. Um, our surgeon's office, I've talked to them many times. They follow up. They're amazing. I still have a ton of numbness where they did the fat transfer. I have the most numbness. Mm -hmm. Um, the butt, your yeah, butt, but right? My butt, um, my total backside. Mm -hmm. I cannot mm -hmm. feel anything. I do feel pressure, but not uncomfortable pressure, but there's a lot of times if you gently touch me, I don't even have a clue I'm being touched. And your tummy is numb, right? right. From, From my your... belly button down, down to my scar. Total, same thing. And then with my muscle repair from my rib cage all the way down to my scar is still very tender, almost like a bruise, but it's not out of control. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't stop me from doing any of the exercises that I do. Um, yeah, so I still have numbness. It's totally normal. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and it, it does get way. better as time goes on. But I think that you will always have a little bit yep. of numbness, but it'll be less sensitive, less numb as you go on. And, you, I mean, you being only four months post-op, you've got a long way to go. A long way to go, yeah. girl. Just hang I, in there. Hang I in like, there. <laughs> I like to take in um, – I rub mine a lot. I know <laughs> from other surgeries to desensitize those nerves, you just <laughs> rub it and rub it and rub it. So I just – I put my Arnica oil on there and rub it still all the time. Yep. And all that time. will help it kind of get things moving to the nerves yep. and the sensitivity. Um, did you have to buy new clothes to fit your new body dimensions? So I had to buy new bras. Um, because of having an extended breast lift, they removed the skin on the side right here. So my around is smaller, but not because my breasts are bigger because of the implant. So what I ended up having to do was get the same cup size, but a smaller around. And as far as like pants and shirts, mine didn't change. Although my pants and shirts are looser because the skin on my back is gone, but it wasn't enough that I had to buy new wardrobe is mainly undergarments. Right. for me or swimsuit tops and things like that have to be a different size. So it's funny. This is a great question because Jen and I on our walk yesterday when I first got here had this exact same conversation. Mm -hmm. One thing when the unexpected fat transfer that again, I didn't get to do any research and I am a total research girl. I have to know what's going to happen and be in control. I realized that as I'm from upstate New York and we are 13 degrees in the morning. I have not worn any of my shorts and my capris. So I have been struggling when I went to get clothes to come to hot Arizona of, oh my goodness, my, my shorts are kind of tight in the butt. They're kind of tight. And it made me mentally have a, oh my goodness, what did I do? Have I put on weight? This, it made me panic. And coming and having, this is why you need a BFF yeah. who's totally honest and not yes. just snowballing you. <laughs> yeah. um, I was able to just have conversation with Jen and have a therapy session and, and just simply say, you know what? Of course my pants are going to be tighter in the back because my butt is big. I have mm -hmm. a butt again. I have a girl butt instead of a boy butt. Mm -hmm. I could not be happier. I'm so thankful for the surgeon to say, oh, wait a minute. We really need to do a fat transfer. And Jen, thankfully, was with me, and I didn't have that panic moment. And I just was like, yep, if that's what he's the expert, I'm so thankful I didn't second guess it. So the answer is yes, I mm -hmm. have to buy different pants. And it's not for my legs, it's not for anything, and it's not my stomach. The pants tend to be loose in my stomach because your skin's gone. Yeah, yeah, but tight in my butt cheeks, which yeah. can be a good thing. Yeah, that however, is good. <laughs> it's exactly what yeah. I wanted. <laughs> Um, however, it is definitely a mental struggle. And the only thing I can say is find your BFF, mm -hmm. find your therapist, go have the conversation because it, the mental fatigue that I have caused myself the last three or four months has 
been pretty um, catastrophic. Uh, I definitely am thankful we had that conversation. And Jen just said to me, Amy, you just need to, you can't wear skinny jeans. You have to wear yeah, curvy a jeans. Jean, yeah, that's yeah. curvy and shows off that beautiful body yep. yours that I didn't say anything Speaking of her. her fat transfer, um, that's actually a good point. I'm glad that you said that because when you have plastic surgery in Mexico, you don't actually have your consultation <laughs> until you arrive in Mexico. So we had our consult the day before we had surgery. So for me, I didn't know what size implants I was going to have, nothing until we have the consult. Lola. Hi, babies. So, w during the consult, the surgeon said that he was going to do the fat transfer for Amy. And Amy said, well, how much is it? Because you also have to prepay for your procedure. So, we had prepaid for our procedure. And he actually didn't charge her. He said, I'm not going to charge you. I'm going to be in there. I'm just going to move it around while I'm... <clears throat> move it around while I'm in there. So that was a good thing to know is that Lois playing, um, that she didn't have to pay for that. So right. he did it as, for no charge. So that was a nice thing about going to Mexico. The surgeon had said he wanted to make sure that I went out in the best possible shape because mm -hmm. it is his reputation on the line. Mm -hmm. He wants to stand behind his work and make sure not only was I happy, but he was also happy with what I, my end result was. This is what they do, and Troy's not here to get him out of here. <laughs> They're ridiculous. Okay, we have one more question on YouTube. It says, good morning, Jen and Amy. Is there going to be any more cosmetic surgeries for you in the future? So we kind of answer that. For me, no. Um, I would have done it all at once if I was going to have more. I just deal with my skin on my stomach and my thighs. So for me, it's a no. For me, it's also a no? Yeah. Um, I am happy with what I have. I mean, there's always, look, we're, we're human. We are our worst own quit critic. We always will have things of, ooh, if I nip this or tuck this. Yeah. But I gotta be honest, I love the body that I have. It's not perfect. I do not look like Cindy Crawford, unfortunately. Same. However, I love the fact that I do have those a little bit of round hips and the mm -hmm. rounder butt. And I'm okay with the bigger legs because as I'm doing my squats and all of the workouts, I, man, I, I love jacked up legs. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is. We're all always going to have something that makes us unhappy. But life is about loving who you are in every with stage it. of your yep. weight loss, whether you're yep. just starting in the middle, at the end, yep. and we're not going to be perfect. When you're overweight your whole life, your body just doesn't bounce back to if you would have never had a weight problem. So you just have to be okay with the body that you're in and just learn to make it the best body that you can with exercise or whatever works for you to give yourself the shape that you want to have. But for me, it's a no for anymore. Yeah, it's a hell no. Yeah, it's a no. It's hell a no. 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 <laughs> Um, we have quite a few on Facebook as well. Uh, let's see. One says, would you have prepared, what would you have prepared for differently if given the chance? Like, would you have packed anything? So I overpack. I'm an overpacker. That's Always an, un an overpacker. That's yeah. An yeah. So I had a lot of stuff, which honestly, I was glad that I packed a few extra things clothing wise. And you, and we brought a lot of comfortable clothing, like loose pants, loose shirts. I don't know if I would have done anything differently to prepare. Actually, yes, I would have downloaded a uh, translation app because we didn't have one and we had to hurry up and download it when we got there. And I maybe would have brushed up on my Spanish a little, but other than that, I probably wouldn't have done anything different. As far as if I had <laughs> done anything different, um, I think I mentioned it already. The only thing I would do different is if I had known I was going to have a fat transfer, mm -hmm. girl, I would have definitely gotten the little fat transfer butt pillow, pillow because <laughs> my butt hurt so bad. Because you have to remember, I'm on the opposite coast, and then I had a four-hour layover. It was and a 10-hour flight. Yeah, 10, ten hours hour of flight, flight. Mm -hmm. four-hour layover. I was in misery. It was miserable, the ride home. My rear end hurt so bad. Even you couldn't though, prepare for that, though, because you didn't yes, know yes. you were going to have it. So they gave Correct. her a pillow at the recovery house, which was helpful, but you can't take that with you when you leave, and that was the issue yeah. on that. So tell, so tell them what you used on the plane. So you know how when you travel, you have those cute little neck pillows that are literally this big? Um, I used that to sit on on the way home. And normally, the pillow they give you, the one they let me use at the recovery house, and I had Amazon ship home mm -hmm. to meet me at home is the big um, nursing pillow that goes, I think it's called a boppy or boppy. something. Uh -huh. that goes all the way, I mean, that thing compared to your little neck pillow so that you don't sleep crooked. Um, it was tough. That was definitely something. If I had known, I would have prepared for mm -hmm. that the most. I was really happy, happy because I 
took a lot of moo dresses and I was so thankful mm -hmm. because let me tell you those first three days you just cannot move you are mm -hmm. it's not that you're in pain you're so uncomfortable there's no pain there's it's no pain. that's what we were talking about at the recovery house I'm like we're not in pain we're uncomfortable and you're yeah. just constantly uncomfortable and you can't get comfortable even when I came home I was uncomfortable I slept on the couch for two months yeah. straight because I couldn't lay down so I wouldn't say that it was painful it was uncomfortable from yes. the get-go straight out of the gate uncomfortable and for me yeah. the best thing that I did purchase and I don't know if you may have this question one of the best things I purchased for my recovery at home was a power lift chair Oh yeah. Because I can't. I gotta be honest with you. I could not get myself out of the chair for nothing. I couldn't mm -hmm. reach down and itch, itch a scratch on mm -hmm. the middle of my leg. You are so limited. Those first, I would even say the first month. month. I lift the power chair. Used to lift power chair to help me get up for the first month. I think there is a question about you standing up straight. If I remember that. It took so a while. What, yeah. Well, and I think that is one of it these. Took a while. Um, the next one is: Did either of you have any post-op complications once back to your homes? And if so, how was it addressed? So I had no complications. Uh, the only thing that I had is that my breasts were uneven. They're still a little bit uneven, not as bad as they were. But we had constant communication with the surgery team in Mexico. We actually have to check in every week, send photos, and send basically a check-in on how we're feeling, if we have any questions, and then the surgery team would get back to us with answering our questions. So since I didn't have any complications, it was just the constant checking in every week. And now I check in with her every few months yep. just to like make sure everything looks normal or if we have questions on how our scars are healing. But in the beginning, you have drains and everything. So you have a lot of questions about taking the drains out, when to take those out. We had to send in the um, amount of liquid that was in our drain and then you're not allowed to take it out until the liquid is a certain amount. So we had constant communication in the beginning. Constant. Agreed. Yeah. And I, you didn't have complications. I had no complications. I was very thankful for that. Um, the most I, I did have drains when I came home and my PCP refused to touch them because I went out of the country for surgery. So the BA that I am, I literally snipped the stitch and pulled them out myself. She took her on her dream. It yeah. was the coolest thing. I'm telling you, don't, <laughs> don't be anxious. Just do it. Just, I said, what are you doing? Why are you taking... So I made my friend's husband, who's a nurse, come take mine out because I... and Well, I was going to have Troy do it. He's like, oh no, I'm not touching those things. And my drains, just for reference, if you have upper body procedures, my drains were on the side right here. So it was constantly rubbing. And one of my drains was really sore. I couldn't wait to get it out. And then Amy's were down in her stomach area. Yep. So depending on where your surgery is, your drains are in different areas. I had two drains. I had three drinks. And she had three. I so had she three took drinks. her own out. She's crazy. Took my own. And it was nothing. Yeah. It was nothing. She also took her belly button stitches out. The belly button stitches, <laughs> however, were a little more difficult because I can't, I couldn't bend forward. And so my drains came out after yours. Yes, after. Mine mm -hmm. were, I'm going to say I was probably 16, 18, 20 days out. Mm -hmm. I had mine a long, long time. time. Me too. Um, and at the same time, they were like, okay, take your belly button stitches out. But they didn't tell me how many stitches I had. So, and again, my belly button's so little and legitimately try and bend forward with a surgery and try and look in your belly button. It doesn't happen without surgery, let alone with surgery. So yeah. I set myself up with a bunch of mirrors and lights and I just kind of like kept pulling and pulling. Um, that gave me discomfort the next day. I just had like a little bit of a tummy ache, I guess is mm -hmm. how I would explain it. But yeah. I had no complications. I did have three or four of the stitches on my backside, right um, at the top of my right butt cheek that worked themselves out like mm -hmm. four weeks out and they itched horribly. And I was so worried. Discomfort. Was, yeah. Discomfort. Lots of discomfort. Yeah. I was so yeah. worried that, um, that my skin, my incision was going to open up, but it never really did. It opened far enough to get the stitch. And as soon as I could see a piece of it, I just pulled on it with a pair of tweezers and it came right out and the, that was it, it closed right up. Mm -hmm. So it did not open. So no complications at None. all. Zero, we which is, blessed. we were very lucky. Um, the next question was, would we have more surgeries? But then it also says, if you were to have more surgeries, would you go back to Tijuana? And if you were to have surgery, what would you consider? So I would absolutely go back. 100%. To Mexico. I would never pay five times the price here. There is a question about price, so we'll go into that too. Um, if I had any other cosmetic surgeries, I would probably have a thigh lift. 
uh, because I have quite a bit of loose skin on my inner thighs and I would probably have a mini tummy tuck. So I don't need a full tummy tuck, but I do have quite a bit of loose skin in the middle, but neither one of those procedures are function related for me. They're more aesthetic and the procedures that I had were more function related so that I don't have skin bouncing around when I'm working out. So I, if I were to have them, that would be what I would have. And yes, I would go back to Mexico in a heartbeat. I would a mm -hmm. thousand percent mm -hmm. go back and I would say to everyone listening, please, please, please don't be afraid. Yeah. They were, we were safe. They were, we were wonderful secure. at the hospital. The food. One, the food was amazing. Our nurse Mary was amazing. Food. Yes, Mary. I love don't you feel like we got better care at the hospital there than we do here? Like no, not the box. recovery house, the hospital. No, it, yeah, hands it was amazing. They were there every second. Almost too much. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And we would, we would amazing. sleep or we would go walk around and we'd come back and they would bring us these really good mango juices mm. that were like smoothies. They gave us whatever we wanted to eat. They gave us nice, healthy food. We had chicken salad. We had soup. So I would say that care wise, the hospital was exceptional. I agree. From start to finish. Totally. Agree. The doctor, wonderful, super personable. And I know we're going to get asked, where'd we go? So we went to CER hospital and we had Dr. Suarez was our plastic surgeon. So he's who did our procedure and there's a team of surgeons. So we have a lady named Daniela. That's who we would check in with. And then if she couldn't answer our question, then she would find out from Dr. Suarez and would always get back to us. But yeah, I think Mexico was best decision ever. Agreed to go hands Agreed. down. Um, let's see. Let me read. Okay. So this one says, why did you choose to go to Mexico? Funny you ask, cause I was going to ask you that in a post a hundred percent price. Oh, agreed. That was the 100%. reason. That was the So I had a consultation in Tucson and I had a consultation in Phoenix for called the same procedures, the extended breast lift implants back lift. And I was quoted anywhere from about 35 to 45,000 for all three procedures. I paid 8,500 in Mexico for all three procedures. And that included hospital stay, medication, pre-op testing, post-op testing, the surgery, everything. That was everything. However, the recovery house was not included. That Oh, that was also your transportation. It was. They pick you up in San Diego, take you over the Tijuana border. They drive you everywhere you need to go. The recovery house is optional. And I think we have questions on that. That is an addition. So that was about another thousand or 1200, but we were there for, I was there for five days. She was there for, was there for eight. eight. So still really affordable. I mean, that's 24 hour care, nurses, food, everything. So price for me, big difference. And I know for same you, thing. yeah, same thing. Yeah. I had three consultations. Um, again, anywhere from 22,000, I think up to 37. And didn't you have people tell you they wouldn't do a 360 yes. tummy tuck in so the States? They yeah. would not do a 360 tummy tuck. Mm -hmm. They would do, and I'm not sure what it's called. The one from hip to hip. That's all they oh, would what, do. Isn't that a normal time ago? I think, oh, maybe. I'm yeah. not sure what they call that. 360, yeah. by the way, you guys, is all the way around. Literally So all the way completely around. 360 around her yep. whole body is the cut, rather yes. than just in the hip to hip in the front. That's the difference. And the nice thing is, is the 360, where they place it on your body, like mm -hmm. when I wear my underwear or my, or my swimsuit, can't you can't even see it. Mm -hmm. You don't even know it's there. I have not one time, and I, so a little content, a little background, I actually teach AquaFit. I'm a group fitness trainer is my fun job. <laughs> um, so I am in and out of the water. I'm in a swimsuit. I'm in cycle shorts. I teach cycle. So, I mean, I have a lot of opportunity. You know, I'm not afraid now for the first time in my life at the gym, in the pool. If it's a day and I have a lot of returning clients, I take my top off and I go in my sports bra and my athletic shorts and get in the pool with them. And I have, mm -hmm. and nobody knows really that I don't mm -hmm. openly say I've had a 360 tummy mm -hmm. tuck. Um, and not one person has ever even been able to see a scar or yeah. even question it. So yeah. Yeah. And what did you pay in Mexico? I don't remember what you paid. And this is tough. I wish we talked about this sooner because I don't remember. I, I think, think it was, was seven. Seven thousand. Yeah. I so it's it like 7, a third, a third, yeah. a quarter to a third yeah. of what you pay in the U.S. So. To be honest, that's the only reason that we chose to go to Mexico Agreed. is the price. And we were recommended by my friend, Victoria, who had several procedures, same hospital, same doctor, same recovery house. The one that's husband is the nurse that took my drains out her. She had several procedures. So, and he, our doctor is also us board certified. Correct. So he's certified to be a surgeon in the U S he just works out of Mexico. So basically we got us care. quality care in yep. Tijuana. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For the, for a much less price.
One other thing that set it aside for me, the reason that I decided to go to Mexico also was the actual care in the hospital. Mm -hmm. My, all of my consultations, you literally were in and out in less than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And we were out in about 36, but we went yeah. to a recovery house. In yes. the United States, they do not give you a recovery you go house. Home. You go home and your support staff basically gets to just figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure mm -hmm. that you've had times in the past where you're sick here in the United States and you call this 800 number to your office and you get a call center and they eventually will call you back. Where there, if we had problems like you did in the middle of the night the first night, yep, they're they right were there. right there. Mm -hmm. And they knew immediately what to give you, what to take, how to take care of you, what mm -hmm. reposition. Let's They... It's their bread and butter. They know what they're doing. So that was a huge change of what, a huge reason of why I went to Mexico. Yeah. The care afterwards. And let me tell you, you need a lot of care. Mm -hmm. A lot, especially the first week or so. <laughs> oh. And actually, this question is about that. Would you suggest hiring a personal nurse for after surgery to help with care while recovering? Also, could you get one from Mexico since you said you were pretty close to the border? So you can either go home. You have the option to go home. When you're released from the hospital, you can go home. I don't know if they have... I think if you went and stayed in a regular hotel, maybe you could hire a nurse. I don't know, but they have recovery houses in Mexico that are specifically designed for recovery post mainly cosmetic surgery. And you can stay as long as you want. And it's 24 hour care. Our house was on the water, was yep. on the ocean. And you have a nurse there. They provide all your food. They distribute your medica medication. Yep. They take care of all your medication. <clears throat> Everything. They chat with the doctor every yep. single every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. They take photos. Remember yep. they took they photos, took photos for us. us. Yep. They help you shower. Yes, and get, do your hair. And and for Amy, she couldn't sit up, so they would help her up. I had a pretty miserable first night, and the nurse came in and rubbed my back with this gel stuff. And they just, the point of the recovery house is after care, after surgery, because you can't stay in the hospital. Once you're healthy enough to leave the hospital, they need to make room for more patients. So if you have cosmetic surgery, even if you live close, I only had an hour flight, I would highly recommend a recovery house, at least for three, four days, of days minimum, just so you can be more normal when you have to go home. And let's right? be honest, even though you have a support person, I don't <laughs> care how wonderful they are, mom, brother, sister, spouse, BFF, whoever, yeah. whatever, you don't understand. It is a job just to get out of bed and go to the bathroom, let alone shower. The first three showers I took, I couldn't lift my arms. I sat on a chair and they yeah. basically handed me the washcloth with soap on it and I would wash a part of my body and I'd have to wait. And I'd wash a little more. And because that wasn't my support staff doing that, for me, I don't like people to take care of me. I'm a big girl, I'll take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me to be vulnerable and for them to really take care of me. Yeah. It was definitely a game Worth changer. It. And it's so affordable. It I was. mean, $1,000 <clears throat> for five nights, and that's 24-hour care. I mean, right. you can't beat that at all. This question kind of ties in with that one. Um, did you fly back post-surgery and how soon? So, again, you can go home immediately. Yeah. We could have flown home the day we were released from the hospital. That's entirely up to you. They will let you. I mean, you can do Don't what you want. Me. You do have to... And maybe it's different if you don't stay in a recovery house, but our last day before we flew home, we had to go back to the hospital so that they could look us over and take the tape off of our scar. So we had a follow-up appointment. Yes. And I don't know if you went home the next day, if you just don't have that follow-up appointment, we stayed. So I'm not sure what that looks like. That would be a question I would ask. That's whoever you choose to for to have for plastic surgery. And so I flew home on day eight. Um... I don't want to say that I waited too long, but I definitely didn't want to go any sooner. Yeah. That flight home for me, because I am across the country, was brutal. And it wasn't my tummy. It was my fat transfer. Mm -hmm. My backside burned so bad on that flight home. That was the piece. Now, granted, I still couldn't stand up straight, so mm -hmm. I was uncomfortable. Um, but the butt, the, the fat transfer in my backside and my hips, it was no joke. That... That was tough. What happens if there are any complications upon your return and do you return to Mexico or is there a local doctor that will see you? So if you have any complications, 
post-surgery, once you're back in the United States, you have the option to go to your doctor. They told us if you have a major thing, go to the ER. Yes. They can't turn you away. They have to care for you in the ER. Now your primary care doctor, like Amy's wouldn't remove her drains. I didn't, I don't have a primary care doctor in Arizona. So it would be depending on if your primary care doctor would service your needs post out of the country. What I was told is that if you have to go to the hospital doctor, ER, urgent care, post-surgery, just don't tell them you were out of the country. Just go in and say, I'm having a complication post-plastic surgery. This is what it is. Correct. And as far as going back to Mexico, you can go back whenever you want. They actually recommend when you're six months post-op, they would like for you to come back and see the surgery team again and have everything looked over. We didn't go back. Amy's too far and I didn't feel like it was necessary because again, we check in with her regularly. And if there was an issue that needed corrected, like the breast not being the same sheet, they were willing to correct it. No charge. Yes. You come back, they'll fix it for you. So they will follow through with any revisions. No yes. charge to you. But I don't see us. I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to go back. I'm yeah. happy. Yeah, now, we're fine. Now at the <laughs> six month mark, I contemplated possibly going back. One of my scars on the left side, if you measure from the scar to the floor, mm -hmm. in six months was three quarters of an inch higher than the other side. However, they offered to fix it. No problem. Mm -hmm. Come no on fee. in. We'll take great care of it. Yeah. Day surgery. You can yep. actually fly home the next day. No problem. We'll take care of you. We will um, support, you know, and follow up. And I said, thank you, but I'm just going to be patient and see what happens. And I'm so thankful because at this point I have less than maybe just a little over a quarter of an inch. You difference. can't even tell. And you don't tell. You and you guys tell. will see it in the photos that yeah. we post, yeah. the scar photos. You, if you look at her, you can't tell. And it's under your underwear line. It is. It so is. the only person that's going to see it is you, right? When you're, when right. you're not in clothing, but in clothing, you would never know. never know, but they were really great about if you aren't happy in any fashion, come back and we'll correct it. No charge. Free of charge. Free of charge. Completely free of charge. Just show up. All you got to do is get there. And then we have a question for Amy. It says, Amy, how was your recovery? How painful was it? How long before you could stand up fully. I knew there was a question about that. Yeah. I have excess stomach skin and would love to have a tummy tuck. First so off, first was, how was your recovery? Which we talked about. Yeah, recovery yeah. was uncomfortable. Um, after day three, I didn't even take any pain meds. Yeah, so then it says how painful, so not, yeah, right? Not. It was discomfort. Yeah, and I discomfort. only took the pain meds the first three days because that's what they recommended. Yes. And I finally mm. was like, okay, I don't have pain. Can we go without it? And the recovery house says, well, absolutely mm -hmm. we can. So I took Tylenol for a couple more days. And then I was like, yeah, because I had no pain. I was uncomfortable, but I had zero pain. Mm -hmm. Zero pain. And then how long before you could stand up? Oh, straight. Fully? Yeah, fully. Ooh. Like where you were back to normal, essentially. Standing I would up. say four weeks. A yeah. full four weeks. Luckily, um, the job that I have, I do get to work from home. Um, part of the week and I just reached out to my management and said hey look I'm having a procedure I didn't tell them what it is it's not their concern I'm having a procedure and I really need to I want to work but I need to recover from home and mm -hmm. they said absolutely no problem so after four weeks and one day I went back to the office and I was standing upright I was very gentle because it just feels like it's pulling not in a hurtful or harmful way. The skin is just so tight, which is exactly which what is I exactly paid for. What I paid for. Yep. Um, so that, and I still to this day have that feeling, especially when I get up first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. I just have that tight sensation, which is perfect. Again, that's what we paid for. Yeah. Um, so I would say I couldn't stand up for four weeks. So plan on at least a month before. I mean, you could move around. Yes. How long before you could get yourself out of bed? Because like when you were in the recovery house, you weren't getting out of bed. Oh, no. Without me no. or a nurse. So how long before you didn't need any assistance or your power chair? I would say six weeks. So yeah, I mean, it's a six long weeks. recovery. Yeah, because mm -hmm. with that muscle repair, it feels like I got kicked in the stomach by mm -hmm. a mule. Mm -hmm. um, it is, un again, it doesn't hurt. It's just uncomfortable. Think about... If you have done 9 million burpees or 9 million sit-ups <laughs> yeah. and it's just so tender, it doesn't hurt. It's just tender. Mm -hmm. um, and I still have some of that tenderness even today Same. and it has gotten better mm -hmm. over time. Um, but yeah, it was, 
It's it long. A while. Yeah, you're not going to be living your best life for a little yeah. bit after your. Again, that is why you need a great support person, and yeah. you need to be vulnerable and allow yourself to have help. Because if you don't, you are going to have a complication. Mm-hmm. You're going to have, and also something to think about: you will end up with more scar tissue around those incisions if you go too fast, too hard, too quick. Yep. And that was part of checking in with the surgeon to be released to exercise again. And I mean, I wanted to go way before six weeks. I was like, if I have to stay here for one more day, I'm about to lose my mind. But I listened to her and I'm glad that I did because my first walk was pretty pretty exhausting Exhausting. um, because you're still recovering. And so that's a lot for your body. So listen to your doctor, whether it's us or not, and don't push it because you don't want to open incisions, have any issues. And that's probably why we had no complications because we did what we were told to do straight out of the gate. What they told us to do, we did it. Um, One of the questions is Jen, did the skin removal surgery on your back help with making your stomach flatter? So no, um, because the back doesn't impact the stomach. However, I will say, and I asked him this in our consultation, I said, well, when you do the breast uh, lift and implants, will that flatten my stomach out at all? And he showed me, he's like, well, if I pull up on your saggy boobs, then it'll like kind of pull up on your stomach. I will tell you though, that there's really no difference. I don't see any visible difference in my stomach skin after my Procedure in order to get rid of skin on your stomach, you have to have a tummy tuck. Yep. Whether it's a mini, a full, or a 360, that is the only way. Skin doesn't just go away. Yes. It has to be removed. So I would say that I noticed really no difference um, in my skin on my stomach. I was hoping, but we can all wish. We can all wish. We can all just wish. didn't happen. I agree though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I agree with and you. And then someone said, Where did you go? So we went to Tijuana. Mexico. And then we have one more question. And this is, are your breasts even? I had mine done six months ago and one is still higher and fuller. So I was told from multiple people, Victoria, my friend included that it, and my neighbor, my actual old neighbor had implants as well. It can take up to a year for them to fluff and go into place. And I will say that mine, I'll be a year in May and it's February. So we're like eight months. Yep. Now, mine are still a little bit uneven. This one is higher than this one, but I just try to massage the implant down into place. And again, if I'm not happy at the end of a year, and I told the surgeon, I said, well, let me wait a year because if they're going to continue to fall into place, then I'm just going to leave it alone because I don't want to go back and I don't want to have another surgery. But if I am unhappy at the year point, then I, that's when I would think about, do I want to go back? But kind of like your scar, nobody right. notices. I mean, my husband takes my pictures for me and he's like, I don't even think they look uneven. So it's more us. Right. But you, if you're not happy, then have it corrected because you have to live in your body. But at this point, I don't see myself having a revision. I'm just going to deal with it. One (laughs) wonderful thing from our surgeon, when I had mentioned earlier about the one scar being so much higher than the other, and you only really can see it from the back. You Mm -hmm. can't even see it from the front. Mm -hmm. So when I talked to Daniela, she said to me, you know, hey, look, we'll fix it. Come on down, blah, 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 blah. And I told her, I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that right now. However, tell me, is there a time frame? Uh, you know, do I have only a certain amount of time? No. And she says, no. Forever. Forever. Yeah. If you're unhappy in, mm-hmm. you know, two years, call us up. We'll take care of it. Yeah. And that's a really good thing Wonderful. because I don't know if the States do that. <clears throat> I feel like once you leave, they're like, bye. But in Mexico, she told me the same thing. She goes, I don't care if you're 10 years post-op and you're like, listen, this is not, I can't even handle it. Then come back and they'll correct it. Yeah. And I don't know if they'll pay for your airfare. I don't know what they, I don't know if it's just the procedure, right? which I'm imagining it's just the procedure Probably. and the transportation. Yes. And I would assume if you didn't fly home, you would be responsible to pay for the aftercare. But she told me the same thing. It's a day surgery. You would go home the same day. I do believe though, I think, and I could be wrong, that the fa- the recovery house, because we've been there once, maybe they would let go us again, come back. In, they give us a discount. Yeah, and that they could give us be a discount if we are returning to the recovery house. So I mean, that's it's if you're not happy, they'll correct it. Mm-hmm. But I ha- know several people that have been to Tijuana, even different surgeons than I've had, that have the same happy results. Yeah. And so I would say, if you're nervous about it, don't be completely safe. Mm-hmm. We were never by ourselves. Actually, the first day that we got there, there was a Mexican place. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. across the street and they were going to have a Marachi band. Yeah. And I'm like, let's go, let's, let's go. go. 
And they were like, no, once you check into the hospital, you're not leaving. So they made sure that we were safe. Yep. Um, and they had DoorDash, Mexico DoorDash. So yep. if you wanted something, you could have it DoorDash. I mean, I don't feel, we never once felt unsafe. Never. In the recovery house, it was in a neighborhood. It was actually yep. gated. It was. And gated. it was in a neighborhood. And so you never felt unsafe there. And we weren't like rooting around outside. I mean, no. we were on the deck outside, but I never once felt unsafe from start to finish. Not once. Agreed. So I would say if you're nervous, just if you, if you're on a budget and you don't want to pay 40,000, at least look into it. And if you get there and you decide it's not for you, you can go home. Yep. You can go home because you don't pay until you get there. Right. So if you show up and you decide, you know, you chicken out and you don't want to do it, you can go home, but I would recommend it for sure. Yeah. One thing back. that I did love about Dr. Suarez is I never felt rushed. No, he was lovely. In he had all, amazing bedside manner. Amazing bedside manner. Yeah. In all of my consultations, I felt rushed. I felt like a piece of cattle being pushed through. Mm -hmm. Hurry up. Come on. Time is money. Mm -hmm. He spent so much time with us that night before. And it was like... Seven o'clock. Yeah, night. it was late. It wasn't in normal business hours, but he was so wonderful and just answered all our yeah. questions, made us feel joked around he with did. us because I tried to get a fat transfer and he told yeah. me no. So, yeah. I mean, he joked around with us. He, right. he kept saying, do you have any more questions? And we had two surgeons yeah. in, our, in our consult yeah. and we had another woman who I'm assuming was like maybe a surgery nurse, but they were wonderful. Yeah. And they literally did not rush us. They answered all our questions. Even the day of our surgery, they yep. didn't rush us. They took, they, and what I appreciated is they walked us through everything that was happening. They did. I'm going to give you this pill that's going to start the anesthesia. Yep. Okay, here's the anesthesia. And I remember when you, you don't remember a lot, but I remember mm -hmm. going in the surgery and laying on the table and there were all these lights and there was this lovely Mexican woman and she was the anesthesiologist and she put her hand on my shoulder and she said, okay, I'm going to give you your anesthesia. I want you to count down from five. That's literally all I remember. But I mean, they walked you through every single step yes. and they never left you alone. They, like Amy said, they yeah. were like in your business. They were the whole time, they making were. sure you were happy and healthy. Yeah. And they walk you down to the transportation. They took us to the recovery house, yeah. no fee, yeah. dropped us off, brought all our luggage in for us, did everything for us. So definitely yeah. recommend. They offered to unpack our clothes. Yeah. It's like, Everything. Yeah. We're like, like, no, no, just put our concierge. Yeah. 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 And, and much more affordable. So one other thing that I loved about the hospital, I normally, um, I've had four or five procedures here in the United States and every single time I have problems with anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Um, they knock me out. No problem, but I don't wake up. My brain wakes up. My body doesn't. And mm -hmm. I'm in a panic. And I am that way for hours. Day procedures. I end up spending the night into the next day. And then eventually I, my, I get sick to my stomach and then I'm all better. And it, that was my only fear. So I reached out ahead of time, talked to the team about it. And then I also talked to the anesthesiologist that day. She was so sweet. Mm -hmm. she, she was came, lovely. I, I hardly remember her. Yeah. Cause I, I remember, remember her. Amy doesn't remember I much. Remember She's a little much. loopy before the they surgery. Have some good meds. Yeah. They have some good meds there. So I had expressed to her, hey, look, I always have this problem. It's never not happened. I'm really concerned. Please be aware. Do what you can. Help me. And I have to tell you, it was the first time I've ever had a procedure that did, didn't happen. Nothing. I did not get sick. No. Nope. Um, I had no groggy. The recovery from the anesthesia was amazing. Now that said, they really gave me something good because I remember being in the pre-op room and talking to the anesthesiologist, she was such a lovely lady. Amy doesn't remember anything. But I remember you guys. nothing <laughs> else. She like, remembers nothing. You don't remember the chicken salad. No. And you were like, oh, this is so good. And she doesn't remember I the chicken remember. salad. I remember everything. Oh, and one other thing about you that was different than me is you had a catheter. I did. So what was the reason that you, so I did not have a catheter, yeah. but do you I, know what the reason? I don't know. So she had that. So keep that in mind if yeah. you have the 360. Have catheter. And we don't know why. Do we know why? I'm not sure, but I have to be honest with you. <laughs> sweet little nurse Mary. Mary. We love Mary. So, you're going to If you get married, get married. Get married. Oh. We love she Mary. says to me, I, I said, oh, I think I need to get up and go to the bathroom. She says, oh, honey, you oh, have a catheter. And I'm like, what? I didn't, I have a catheter? And she's like, yeah, you have a catheter. I'm like, oh, okay. So she says to me, you know, well, we can take it out mm -hmm. as long as you, I had, I had a spinal. That's why I had a catheter. That's why I had a catheter. Oh, I had a catheter. Oh, that's because right. Because they gave me a spinal. Yes. 
They gave me a spinal. Um, That's right. I couldn't and again, remember. I've never had one of those before. Zero problems. Okay. I don't remember any of it. It was no, amazing. she doesn't remember anything. I'm telling you, she remembers nothing until like hours after I know, the... I know. Yeah. <laughs> so then Mary says to me, she's like, well, if you, if you feel okay, this is the next morning, we'll take your catheter out. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, does it hurt? And she's like, oh, no, no, it's fine. I'm panicking. I've never had a mm -hmm. catheter. She was panicking. Oh, I was so worried. And so Mary says, okay, count to three. She goes, one, rip. Yeah, don't even remember. Didn't hurt at all. Didn't hurt at all. Yeah, oh, so if you have one, don't panic. No. She was very worried that it was going to hurt. And she did say that a few times. Oh, one other thing I will say, and this has been both of our experiences, when you get your IV put in, oh, in yes. Mexico, they're not very good at it. And I've actually heard that from multiple people that have had different procedures in any part of Mexico, whether it's yeah. Tijuana or not, ask for someone that specializes in IV. So we ended up being, po I ended up being poked twice. They could, and I, my veins stick out like crazy. So they ended up bringing in a gentleman who was specialized in IV. So save yourself the headache. Amy also had a terrible experience. Save yourself the headache and just ask for somebody. Say, yeah. before you put my IV in, don't let it be just the random nurse on duty. Ask for the specialist of IVs yeah. because we both had a not good experience. Correct. And like I said, I've heard that from multiple people from multiple different surgeries in Mexico that they're just not the best. And they even have the little device and they still couldn't right. get, they could find the vein, they couldn't get it in the vein. Right. And the it's device very was painful. cool. The, the device, device was cool. Was so but cool. if they call the specialist, they got it in like that, yeah. no pain. Like I don't even remember that. I remember the first person. So yeah. save yourself the trouble and just straight up ask for the specialist for IV. Say, I don't want the nurse on duty. I want the person who does the IVs, who trains the nurses to yeah. do the IVs. I would dare say that was the worst part. That was the worst part. It was horrible. That was the worst part. You were, you were in, hers was very, very painful. Yeah. Mine was pretty painful, but she said that was the most pain she's ever had in an IV until we got right. the specialist. Then it was fine. And then it was, then it was in, and mine ended up being in my hand. Mine as well. And we wanted them in our arms. We specifically yep. asked, and they said no. And they tried my left hand, couldn't get it in, ended up in my right hand, which I was like, but well, that's the hand I use for everything. Like, you'll be fine. And it was fine. And the IV came out before we left the hospital. And you're not really getting up and moving around yep. anyways. But I will say, get the specialist for yep. the IV. For, for sure. sure. If you have any other questions for us, leave them in the comments. I'll definitely answer them. But if that was everything that we got, so hopefully it answered some questions for you guys. And yeah, thank you for watching. And thank we will you. see you next time.